Hi everyone, Bob is in the house and today I am feeling myself. I am really feeling myself. It's a Christmas season. It's a New Year season. Christmas just actually passed, but it was really good. We spent time with my family. And for New Year, I'm looking forward to New Year in 2022 because I feel like I finally sort of got my shit together, you know what I mean? Like, and I know what I want. And it, it's gonna be a blast, uh, including the YouTube channel. And because 2021, let's be honest, I lost my fans. I, I, I didn't really get much responses. I didn't really make much videos. Uh, this is, was the year when I tried to experiment with things, uh, try to put out different type of content. Uh, but in the end, uh, I think in 2022, we can uh, come back to music reactions a bit more and then and, and explore uh, with that uh, more things as well and and also engage with you guys and ask you what you want like that's most important thing I kind of forgot with you know well I'm, I was always thinking okay well what my fans will appreciate and appreciate and I just forgot to ask you guys you know what I mean like I should do that um, and so like the, the first week of January uh, I, I'm, I'm having my hopes, I hope I will be able to execute this, but um, like starting from like first week of January of 2022, I'm gonna be asking you guys, uh, even now I can ask you actually, maybe you have thoughts right now, what kind of content you want to uh, see in Music with Bob in 2022, maybe you had some ideas, for example one of them was, um, you know, having actually live streams, I uh, just talking to my one of my um, uh, subscribers that would be cool to you know every friday when the songs drops like new music drops uh to be able to listen to them together uh just like anthony fantano does actually uh, if you know uh, him uh, he has like uh, streams on twitch maybe something like this uh, that would be cool uh, you know so that's that's definitely worth exploring and different things like this you know and um i i kind of miss my fan base, I miss that interaction. Like I, I, I remember at those times when I was coming to this channel more and like dropping videos for you guys every week, and we, we had a blast. You know what I mean? And that that just got got kind of lost in, in uh, 2021. And uh, you know, I, I've been through some things, not not the uh, like not like bad like emotional or anything like that. It, it was all fine, but like. It, there was just like some period of my life where I had to step aside a little bit from YouTube to do other things like uh, my full-time job and things like that. And there was a, uh, a moving thing. You don't see my legendary <laughs> room anymore in the background. You know what I mean? It's not white. Uh, it's not blue. It's, it doesn't have the um, uh, frames with the artworks. We had a lot of good times, uh, but that, in that room specifically, like from the start of the channel, since until uh, summer of 2021, I, I was living in that uh, house. Um, it's um, I mean, in San Diego, and uh, we, uh, when we were like when my family was together, my mom and dad, like my my siblings. I have a one sister and I have one little brother. The family, uh, my my parents, when they broke up in like at the end of 2019, officially, uh, you know, my dad had to move out, but my like our family still stayed in that home and i just um I, I continued doing videos over there but now like this year we had to you know not we had to but like we, it was a decision to move out from that house uh because you know like uh, the separation happened and my mom wanted like a different change i mean the change of uh, scenery and house as well uh sort of uh, it was the house which had you know, negative uh, memories and emotions uh, in that home, so it was kind of like a little bit um, kind of sad uh, uh, home to stay in at this point. And uh, we, we decided to, I guess, move forward and uh, move to a new house. That took time as well. But in the end, this is a house actually I'm filming right now. It's my uh, dad's house. You know, I've been living together with my dad, like only my dad and me um, lately. And um, my mom, who has new house, she is in. Um, um, I haven't I haven't showed you 
that house yet, you know. Uh, but uh, definitely one day, my sooner than later, actually, uh, it will come. Uh, probably even in this video, actually, because uh, my 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 vinyl things that are related to this video, like uh, top twenty albums of uh, this video, I didn't forget the topic. <laughs> actually, guys, yeah, we we're gonna uh, talk about top twenty albums, music that uh, surprised me a lot and uh, it was great in 21 in 2021 let's celebrate that but um i will be showing you from that house i guess some footage of my vinyls i didn't really tell you what was happening behind the scenes i guess so this is me sort of opening up and clearing things up and um i'm fucking excited <laughs> for 2022 let's make it the biggest fucking year for us for you uh my fan for me like let's let's make great things let's do dope shit let's challenge ourselves let's fucking go and um fucking youtube this channel this should work out like this will work out uh this channel will have a lot of followers a lot of uh, subs we have we're gonna have a lot of fun all right guys we are finally ready to talk about top 20 albums in 2021 uh first i'm gonna talk about on honorable mentions so honorable mentions uh to hell with it <laughs> pink panthers is uh my first uh, honorable mention here next we have juno by remy wolf another pop release that uh, got me excited this year the problem uh, the reason why i'm actually just putting them uh, to honorable mention is just because i haven't really uh like go back to these albums as much as I did when it comes to top 20 albums. So that, that's the only thing. But, but I really like this project. And then the, we have uh, 2.5 by Amine. Uh, we have uh, Bryson Tiller, A Different Christmas. I just like the different twist to uh, Christmas. Uh, you know, me as a hip hop and R&B guy. We have also Bo Jackson. And we also have Scaled and Icy. Do You Dance? by Diplo is uh, my last honorable mention pick. Okay, now we have come to top 20 albums. Uh, number 20, we have Friends That Break Your Heart by James Blake. Yeah, awesome release. If you like alternative uh, experimental music that uh, you know you, you won't usually get from radio, check it out, I really like it. Uh, Wildest Dreams at number 19 by Majid Jordan, Majid Jordan yet again, uh, as soon as they drop, I put them in my top albums because I really love this R&B uh, duo. At number 18, we have 30 by Adele. Number 17, we have Live Life Fast by Ryder Rich. Number 16, we have Happier Than Ever by Billie Eilish. Number 15, we have The Plucks. Number 2 by Benny the Butcher and Harry Fraud. Uh, we have Sour, uh, Olivia Rodrigo, the pop's uh, it girl at the moment. Uh, album 13, we have Trip at Night by Trippy Red and oh my god. <laughs> like I apparently should have at least one album in my uh, like best of the year uh, album list where like last year was a uh, whole lot of red with Playboy Cardi. This year is uh, Trip at Night where mindless dumb fun you know like i should have that <laughs> album uh and um in, in one of my uh, lists but because i again i just enjoy this song, this type of albums you know what i mean and uh, trip at night trippy red provide me that it's very loud like the the beats are very chaotic and uh had that uh, jumping feel you know to it I, I really like that. I really like the set of uh, melodies and songs. And Trippy Red was screaming uh, and uh, singing and doing a lot of things actually really right. Like he was doing it right. I, I was impressed with his performances. I really like the features as well. Drake is on it. Uh, Juice World is on it. XXX Tentacion is on it. Uh, Tyron, number 12, Slow Tie, also a hip hop release. And uh, yeah, forgot to mention that, um, you know, this year was also uh, heavy uh, on hip hop for me. Um, it's not the first year that it's happening. You know, I'm just, uh, hip hop is my favorite genre. So I understand that my uh, followers are from different walks of life. 
so let me know in the comments below which what's your favorite genre to listen to mine is hip-hop uh pop and r&b is there as well pop pop is number two i would say and r&b is number three dance music is there too at edm for sure but um yeah but what's yours what's yours let me know in the comments below um number 11 we have uh life of a dawn r&b project by don Tolliver. we are at top 10 montero montero belly last exit number 10 at number nine, we have Sometimes I Might Be Introvert uh, by Lil Sims. It's on here because she has done a lot of great things. Very impressive uh, recordings. Uh, the track number one, Introvert, extravagant and big and grand like the opener is. Uh, with Introvert, it's like sets the tone for the rest of the album. And, uh, you know, it's like see, historic things is happening <laughs> with this song. Um, uh, and then uh, we have a lot of different nice songs as well. Like uh, from start to finish, there, there's no bad song. I really like the flow of this album as well. So it definitely uh, needed to be included uh, in here. Number eight, we have The Off Season by J. Cole. Uh, number seven, we have Call Me When You Get Lost by Tyler, the creator. Uh, another impressive project by Tyler, the creator. We have album number six, which is Roadrunner by Brockhampton. We have album five, <laughs> Certified Lover Boy by Drake. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am a fanboy of Drake. And it's the second time along with Scorpion, which where I don't like the album from the get go, where I say, oh my God, Drake, you can do so much better than this. I criticize it a lot, but then I never stopped listening to it because he's my one of my favorite, one of the probably top three favorites uh, ever. You know, I really like listening to Drake's music all the time. And <laughs> I was like, shit, Drake, you didn't really like, you didn't uh, release the project to your potential, but damn it. I still like it. <laughs> like it's basically this. Uh, I had the love-hate relationship with this uh, album, but more and more I listen. Definitely, it's just a natural thing. You more and more you just start to like it, and uh, that's what happened to a lot of the songs from Certified Lover Boy. But highlights I would say are "Raise My Mind" and uh, "TSU," "Fountains," "Get Along Better." Uh, these are the songs that are not mm, radio hits. The radio hits are the uh, "Way Too Sexy," "Knife Talk," which is which is actually yes, they're kind of dumb but uh, fun, still fun. You know, uh, I'm, I'm talking about "Way Too Sexy" in particular, but "Knife Talk" as well. Not really unique song, but uh, I like it. But definitely the the, the songs that I mentioned about first that are uh, which are uh, songs I like better, but. Um, yeah, there's plenty, plenty of good songs on Certified Lover Boy, which got good over time for me. Uh, at first, I, um, it was okay. <laughs> well, uh, number um, four, The Voice of the Heroes by Lil Baby and Lil Dirk. The <laughs> This is another of my guilty pleasures. I like this album is so good to me but i understand if other people will not like it but i love it like i really love it i really spent i would say three four months coming back to this album over and over again and listening to it a lot oh my god it was crazy and then we have come to top three top three baby top three baby top three baby top three top three Man, I loved, <laughs> I loved this album so much, so, 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 so much. The songs are legendary in all of this, in all of the three albums, the songs are legendary. They're going to stay with me like forever. Um, yeah, they, they just, these are classics for me. Uh, album number three is The Melodic Blue by Baby Kim. B 
Baby Kim had the greatest debut year <laughs> I remember because, well, yes, there were the babies before. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Olivia Rodrigo. This happened this year, right? As well. I mean, Olivia Rodrigo, when it comes to radio and like being so popular, like overnight, it happened this year as well. Right, Elio Rodrigo definitely probably even overshadows Baby Kim, but for me, to my music taste, Baby Kim was so incredible. Like, it, it, what he has done was so correct. Like, he just got it spot on. Like, not only this, with this album, but he also was featuring in a lot of different albums. The, and those performances were memorable. They're gonna stick to libraries, I guess, for a long time and forever. Um, the melodic blue, why is it so good? I guess it's the um, uniqueness of his uh, delivery and flow and voice. And I, I don't know, like it's just the package that I guess it's kind of familiar, yet it does bring new to the table that I haven't really heard, you know, especially those wild performances uh, with Kendrick Lamar, Family Ties, and Range Brothers. Uh, those were the songs that I listened fuck ton, fuck ton. <laughs> like I had listened to them so, so much, like heavily rotation all the time. And not only he has hyper uh, rap songs, but also nice melodic blue <laughs> melodic performances like scars scars uh which had kanye west uh 808 and heartbreak sample uh, with luck uh, with the uh, love lockdown you know he sampled love lockdown yes i know <laughs> like he, i mean my kanye west is my favorite artist and uh, you know to see him baby kim sample love lockdown which is an amazing song uh, so beautifully and so great. It, it was just a moment in time, legendary moment in time that I will never forget. I really had a lot of fun with this album. There are so many great spots, like the the, the intro of this album where Rosalia of all people speaks, I'm a hot girl. Like it's just, it was good. It was good. The track list is so good. Um, so good. Love it. And then we have album which got a silver medal <laughs> album number two and this list we have an evening with silk sonic that's the it album for me for sure like i i'm gonna be listening to this uh, i'm gonna be coming back to this uh hella 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 a lot of times still i'm still not done listening to this and um i'm still um amazed I'm still amazed how they were able to work so uh, greatly. Anderson Pack and Bruno Mars. Uh, yeah, this I, I didn't know I I needed this collaboration, but since Leave the Door Open, they proved us wrong. They were like, you didn't know that you need us, but we knew that you need us and we came for you. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. Like this was, Fucking incredible. Like, it was brilliant, guys. <laughs> and everything was so exciting. If you haven't listened to it, listen. Like, I cannot say enough words. And you can watch my reaction and review of this album on my channel as well. And number one. Number one. Who is number one? Well, I kind of gave you a clue when I said my favorite ar artist is Kanye West. <laughs> you know, so... We have Donda, Donda at number one by Kanye West. Yes, Donda is impeccable, cannot match, uh, nobody can match with this greatness that came with Donda this year. It, it, it has been incredible, it's fire. The reason Donda is so great is because we have finally got Kanye when he's at his best uh, with uh, Jesus is King that was not the case with Ye uh, while I liked it you know it's not as legendary or memorable or uh, album that will stick with us throughout 
years and years to come, you know? The albums that Kanye West usually releases in his discography, they're always um, legendary. They have, they're always uh, ahead of their its time and they're always um, stick to uh, his uh, listeners for years and years. Like these are classics, uh, right? And we haven't got that with the last two uh, releases. I mean, Kitsy Ghost, we, I don't want to like comment right now because Kitsy Ghost is, it is a legendary release, <laughs> but it's just a collab album. It's really different when it comes to solo stuff. Uh, yeah, we didn't have that, oh my God, this is legendary feel uh, since the life of Pablo. And now we have Donda there too. <laughs> like it's, it's so amazing. We have got legendary songs when it comes to Hurricane, Moon, uh, Praise God, uh, No Child Left Behind, and so, so, so many more. Jail, you know, and uh, everybody, it was such a cultural moment. Everybody uh, from hip hop community was there pretty much like uh, everyone you want to get, like Jay-Z, uh, The Weeknd, uh, Kid Cudi, Travis Scott. Like, it's so many more, like, it is just incredible. Like, everyone that you can think of, Baby Kim, uh, even, like, they were, Ty Dallas sign. like, it's so many uh, people. And for that, Donda is my favorite album of the year. I kept coming back to it. Uh, and we have discovered new stars in this uh, album, Phoebe of Foreign, who I really, really love now. Um, and also Vori, it, it just uh, warms my heart that it all went like that. It, it definitely moment in history, uh, just like uh, Spider-Man's No Way Home, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Like, uh, well, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but yeah, it was also a very, very big moment to me and you just love, love to see what was happening on the screen. So there you go, guys. That was uh, my top 20 albums. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, uh, next year we're gonna do some big things, okay? So um, have fun uh, with uh, Christmas and New Year uh, celebrations. I will see you guys uh, just a little bit later with the top songs of the year. And then we, the next phase, 2022, is going to start. So I'll see you there. Bye guys. <music>